Hello and welcome to a new Blended tutorial. In this one we're going to make these Yu-Gi-Oh cards here. Since it's not that hard of a task and since it's not that complicated, let's hop straight into it and start by deleting the default camera and the lamp. We're going to need at least the camera later, but for now it's just going to be uh, standing in the way. So first off I'm going to enable my screencast keys. You do not need to do, to do this, uh, that is simply for you to see what I'm doing and pressing down here in the lower right corner and yeah so we're going to start off by taking this cube and going to this scene properties panel and going down to the units tab uh, we're going to go to the length and set it to millimeters so next up we're going to go to this item uh, tab here we're going to set the y direction to be uh, 88 millimeters long and then we're going to set the X to be 63 millimeters wide. Now for the thickness of the card, we're going to go with 0.3 millimeters. So that is the correct approximation of a Yu-Gi-Oh card. So that should be good to go. We're going to press Ctrl A and apply the scale just so this scale set here gets reset to one. And now we're going to press tab to enter edit mode. Now what we're going to do is press Ctrl and R uh, left click to set an edge loop and then right click to set it back into the middle. Same thing with this here, Control R, left click, right click and there we go. So now what we're going to do is grab those edges here, only the corner edges, like so. And now we're going to go to the green tab here which is I think called, I don't know, object data properties, object data Yep, properties, we're going to go where it says vertex group, press plus and hit assign. Right off the bat that did nothing, nothing at all, uh, but when we go to the modifiers and get a bevel modifier, we can set the limit method now to vertex group and select the group that we just, uh, just created. That will leave us with a shape that looks like this, which is not at all desired. So we're going to set this to one millimeter and give this a few segments, let's just say six for instance, and then we will have a nice rounded off edge. So what we need to do now is get another bevel, set it to 0.1 millimeters, so that we get, uh, so that we get a little bevel uh, going around the edges, I'm going to give this four segments, and once we press W and shape this smooth, it will have a crease going down the middle diagonally. So in order to prevent that from happening, we can just select those four faces from the top and the bottom and press I once, inset it, a little, inset it a little bit and do it once more and it will all be fine. So now we have a Yu-Gi-Oh card ready to go, but uh, it still needs a little bit of shading. So what I'm going to do for that is go into the shading tab and now we're going to UV unwrap this guy. So therefore we go into, uh, into the um, edit mode, select those four faces again, only from one side, not the other side. If I may show you, if I go into bottom orthographic, those are not selected anymore. Although it will shine through if you're far enough away, but we only want the top side to be selected. Now press Ctrl plus twice to select the other corners as well. And now what we can do is press U uh, and then project from view, bounce. That will give us a nice unwrap, which we can use uh, with a nice texture. Uh, in this case, I'm going to, to be using just a plain old Yu-Gi-Oh card, uh, probably the most used. No, it's not a Karibo, it is me. So yeah, uh, now I'm going to be turning this around by pressing R, Y and 180 give this a 180 degree spin. Just select those four edges again, same procedure as before, and unwrap this guy. Now, of course, we don't want this to have the same texture applied to both sides. So what we're going to do is go into the uh, material uh, tab, press plus, hit the sign, now it's white. Uh, and now what we want to do is have a new material being applied to it with a background texture, which you can also find online. So this is just the Yu-Gi-Oh background texture. And one thing I need to say uh, at this point is that I am at no point in this video 
um, claiming any copyright to Yu-Gi-Oh! or the franchise. This is just for educational purposes and not for commercial purposes. Also, you shouldn't be using this here for commercial purposes either, because uh, I think you would be getting into problems regarding copyright strikes and the law. So, yeah. Uh, now what I want to do is basically give the side some shading, because if we take a look at, uh, at it from the side, it will still have... Give me a second. It will still have this weird shading applied to it. So we're going to go into edit mode again, uh, alt click on this edge here, and it should be with face selection mode, of course, and it should be selecting all the faces around. So we're going to give it yet another material, hit assign, and click on new. So what that allows us to do is give this a separated material, uh, which is going to be looking like the following. We're going to take a mix RGB and plug it into the base color. We're going to take a noise texture and plug it in uh, the factor into the factor. Set the scale to be around 1000. We're going to see why later. Uh, set the detail to something high like 11 and the roughness can be 1. So at this point, if you don't have the Note Wrangler add-on enabled, I would uh, say that you should enable it, you go to edit preferences and then just type in node wrangler, uh, select this box here, check the tick mark and you should be good to go. Now click on the noise texture, control T and that lets you uh, get a mapping node and a texture coordinate node which we will be using the object uh, knob or circle or dot of for the vector. So now you're not really seeing much of a difference are you? So we're going to just take the top color input, select somewhat of this hue here. Now we want to get the bottom input, set it to the same or just set it to black. And what that does is it gives us a nice uh, lining here. Uh, now we can make it a little bit more streaky by just setting this here to be 0.1. Now you can see it's a little bit more streaky and a little bit more line-ish. I don't even know if that's a word, but hey. So, basically, our modeling is done completely. Um, and our shading is almost done. Basically, what we want to do is for the top material, for this one here, which we will be calling top, uh, we can still add a little bit of um, charm, let's just say, by just adding a clear coat Let's just give it like 0.3, which you can see gives it this nice shine. You could of course go into uh, into Photoshop or GIMP and make a black and white mask so that it's only appearing on this window here. But that is of course your personal choice. Uh, choice. choice. Uh, you don't have to do it. And for the next thing is I'm just going to get a, another noise texture. Plug it into the normal with the color output. Get a normal map. So with 0.05 and this here set to about 50, we're going to see we have some little bumps and ridges. I think it looks good enough. You can see that it gives some irregularity, like um, a foil being applied to it with little air bubbles underneath. It just gives it this weathered and a little bit older look. So since we have this here, uh, what we can do now is just add in a plane with, uh, for my liking, the dimensions of 1 meter by 80 centimeters. That will look like this, not a perfect square, but square-ish. I'm going to apply the scale again by hitting Ctrl, A and then by applying the scale. I'm going to set a new texture and if you're not aware of on how to texture stuff, you basically have a few maps which you can download off the internet. So once you find the texture you like, you will first uh, import the color or the albedo or the base color. Uh, those are the three common names. So import that, set it into the base color and you're done with that. Uh, you might have a displacement bump uh, map. So it might say displacement, sometimes it will say bump. Um, you basically plug that into the normal color of course uh, and everything that doesn't go into the base color 
or any other uh, thing that has a yellow dot applied to it, uh, that we should uh, set to non-color. That doesn't do much right off the bat, but once we get a bump node and set it in between and set this yellow socket to the height, uh, you can see that we get some bumpiness. Of course, this is way, way, way too much. I'm going to set it to 0.5 on the distance and that should give me a nice look. Now it's very, very matte and it's very, very uh, consistently matte, which is of course not what we want always. So what I'm going to do is get a gloss map. Uh, on the internet you might, fi uh, might find it under the name gloss or roughness. If it says roughness, just set it to non-color data and plug it right in. If it's like mine and it says gloss, just look for an invert node, invert, plug it in between and it should look fine. Now this is still a bit too much for me on the bumpy side. You can see it really, really well and it's really, really harsh. So I'm going to be setting it to 0.3 instead and that is looking fine. Now the last thing you're going to have is a normal map, which usually looks like this here. It's like a purplish map, which you can also add, but I'm just going to leave it because I don't really think I need it. So I'm going to make my texture a little bit bigger by just, or smaller that is, by just plugging this here all the way in. Of course, I tapped on one and then con pressed Ctrl uh, T. I'm going to give this a value of 0.15 or 1.5. And that is looking really nice. Now I'm going to select my card and make it so that it's resting on the red line by pressing G, Z and moving it up like so. And yeah, so that is basically it. I'm just going to duplicate it and bring it lower here. Rotate this here by 180 degrees. And I'm going to give it an array. Uh, the array will be immediately moving it to the side. I want it to go into the negative one direction on the Z axis and zero on anything else. And I want a stack count of 50. Now I have one full deck applied here and I can basically make some more Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I'm gonna make one, two, three, four, five more of them. And for this one here, I'm going to go into the side of the graphic view by pressing number pad three and rotating this with R to an angle I like. So something about this here looks good. I'm going to make it so that it rests nicely on here. And now a cool trick. Since this is intersecting, you can just press G, Y and Y again until this green line appears across. Now you can move it so that it's resting on the red line again. So that is basically it. I'm just going to move it to the side a little bit to have some irregularity. Now in top of the graphic view uh, with number pad 7, we can grab those, rotate them a bit to make it appear a little bit more random. So maybe this one goes into the complete opposite direction, like so. We really have artistic freedom with this. Uh, it should look as random as possible. So something, about, something like this, like this. Okay, now you don't want to have yourself here. And by the way, if you're wondering how I made myself as a Yu-Gi-Oh card, uh, that is actually a really interesting interesting thing. There is this website, yes, I Google the dimensions. There is this website, which is called cardmaker.net, where you can just add in my YouTube, uh, set it to a monster type, just have a, let it have an effect. You can have anything written here. Just click generate. You can also upload your own pictures. And then you have a Yu-Gi-Oh card, which you can download and use for free, which is basically how I made this here. Um, so now what we want to do is uh, basically we don't want to have like six Phillips lying around here. So I'm going to select one card that I don't need, go into the shading view and where it says top, I'm just going to press on the number seven. Uh, now I can delete this front face or not the face, but uh, the texture. Just get my Gaia. Um, I don't know if it's in English also Gaia. Ah, it is. Actually, card is in English. Nice. Uh, so I'm going to do that with a bunch of cards I downloaded off the internet. 
which are, as I said, not mine. So gotta have a god card here. Okay, and one more. So yeah, once you finished with that, uh, you should be having five cards that look approximately like this, um, or six cards. You can make, of course, however many you want, um, and you can make one of yourself, of course, as I showed you. Uh, this also works with Pokemon cards, with Magic the Gathering cards, with anything you want. Uh, I just chose it to be a Yu-Gi-Oh card, since that is what I used to play with in my childhood. And one thing I also used in my render was a camera, of course. Without one, you will be having a rough time. Um, but you can also get this camera in position, add a constraint here under this blue panel. Uh, it's track two, and then just track it to the card that you want to have. And now, if you move the camera, you can see that it automatically rotates the camera for you so it looks straight at what you want to have. And based on this, you can just move your cards into, direct, uh, into the position that you want them to be. So that everything looks nice. So yeah, if you want to render it in Eevee, I would uh, suggest that you turn on ambient occlusion, uh, screen, space, uh, screen space reflections, uh, enable refraction, half wrist trace should be disabled, trace precision can stay as per se or just increase it to one doesn't really matter it's hard uh, it's basically a little bit harder on the hardware if you put it to one but it should still be fine uh, under performance I would enable high quality normals and um, under the shadows I would set height bit depth sh soft shadows and put this here as low as your computer can handle um, if you are rendering in cycles however um, I would enable uh, adaptive sampling denoising for the render and the viewport um, set this here to like 16 if you're going to render it in the viewport and you should be having something that looks about like this. Now everything is really really dark, that is because we don't yet have an HDRI, I forgot to set this to 16. Uh, so how are we going to get one? We're going to go to this panel here, add a color, uh, click on the color, go to environment texture and now you can download one from HDRI Haven, uh, Haven or any other website that you want. Uh, I'm going to choose this one here and you're going to see it gives this some nice lighting. Now you could go really nuts with the, light, with the lighting and set it to like 2 or 3, uh, but usually 2 is fine. So uh, now for this card here specifically it looks a little bit too weathered for me, so I'm going to put it to something like 0.03. And yeah, that's basically it. This is how you create your own Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Uh, I hope you really liked it and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, I would suggest that you leave a like if you want, of course. If you don't, you don't have to. And uh, you could also subscribe. And one more thing that you could add is a depth of field uh, thing on the camera. Just set it to uh, be on this, on this card and yeah you should have something that looks fairly realistic, fairly nice. And yeah, as I said, you can reward me with a like if you want. If you don't, you don't. Uh, I don't really mind. As long as you watch my stuff, I'm happy. And if you're happy, you can of course share your stuff with me on Discord. I would like to see your Yu-Gi-Oh card arrangement, your Pokemon card, Magic the Gathering, or anything that you want. Anything that repre represents your childhood is welcome on my Discord server. So I hope to see you and I hope to see uh, some more people on my channel and on my Discord soon. See ya, goodbye.